Gunships were among the first types of aircraft developed for Air Force Special Operations. During the Vietnam War, there was a need for an aircraft with the ability to deliver precision firepower near friendly forces. This led to several designs, including the AC-47 Spooky gunship. These gunships were based on transport aircraft, which offered both necessary size and slow speed stability. Inevitably, the C-130 became the ultimate gunship platform. The C-130 is one of the most successful transport aircraft ever to fly, and it has proven ideal as the basis for the AC-130 Spectre, specialized for the delivery of pinpoint firepower. One of the most striking features of the Spectre is its 14-man crew. No other attack aircraft has so large a crew. This many crewmen are needed to operate the multiple guns on board, as well as the sensors and computers which make the guns so accurate. The Spectre draws its crew from the Air Force's Military Airlift Command, including crews of the transport version of the C-130 Hercules, called the Slick by Spectre Crews. I feel as far as the 130 world goes, this is the, the cream of the crop. This is where everyone wants to be. Anyone that's flown Slicks, they will kill each other to get here, as they say. It's a great airplane. At the heart of the AC-130 Spectre are its gun systems. As on the first gunships, the Spectre has them lined up along the left fuselage side. We'll start at the front of the aircraft. We have two 20 millimeter Vulcan cannons. Uh, each one is uh, capable of putting out a rate of fire of approximately 2,500 rounds per minute. Uh, we normally limit our bursts to you know, eight to 10 seconds maximum it, to keep the barrels cool and also, also to conserve the, the ammunition on board. We do have a finite amount of ammunition and uh, normally a small dose will do more than a, than a large burst will do anyways. We have the 40 millimeter Beaufort's cannon. Uh, if you're familiar with the old World War II pom-pom guns, what we've done is taken one of the pom-pom guns off, put it on a trainable mount, and put it in the aircraft. Most of the ammunition that we shoot is uh, 1950s vintage, uh, so it's, it's an unusual gun in itself. And then finally, we have the big weapon, uh, my own personal favorite, the 105 howitzer. Uh, my philosophy is start big and work, work your way down. But uh, it is a very good weapon. Uh, the, uh, it's a standard Army field piece, 105 millimeter howitzer that's been put on a trainable gun mount and fed through the fire control system to make it very accurate. And it delivers a, a good punch when it hits. So it, it, is, it is a very nice weapon. The Spectre gunship is a complex combination of high and low technology. Its 105mm gun is the largest gun carried on any combat aircraft today. You gotta have some respect for the weapon. Uh, it recoils approximately 47 inches and it's a couple thousand pounds. And if you're in behind it or you fall in behind it or your hands are in the wrong place, you could definitely get injured. But you gotta have a lot of respect for that weapon and the ammunition. So uh, we're very uh, careful around that weapon system. Because the Spectre operates at night, it relies on a pair of night vision sensors to aim its weapons accurately. We're primarily a night aircraft and uh, we're equipped with an infrared uh, sensor, which uh, is, you can relate it to a television camera that works off of heat sources versus the light spectrum. And it's, it's very capable. Uh, it, it allows us to uh, operate in, in a very dark night without any light source. In addition, we have a low light television set on board which uh, with some moon illumination can operate independently and without it we can provide our own, uh, our own illumination which is not visible to the naked eye. Uh, those two unique capabilities gives us the eyes in the sky and, it's, and those sensors are tied directly into our fire control system. If you could imagine uh, that with the tie-in that we have, where the sensor looks, the gun looks. And uh, that, that makes it a very, very accurate pro, uh, nighttime uh, resource. The reason the gunship is able to deliver its firepower with such accuracy depends on tactics as well as technology. 
The location of the guns along the side of the aircraft permits the crew to use a special tactic, the pylon turn, which ensures consistent accuracy. The principle is that as an airplane uh, performs a pylon turn around a given point in space, that point in, st in space on the ground that is the center of the pylon turn is very stable and that gives us uh, the bulk of our firing accuracy and the computer is able to anticipate that as we fly around a known, known orbit point around the, the, uh, the target itself. The pylon turn maneuver is unique to the gunship and requires many practice flights for the pilot and crew to perfect this tactic. We go out and shoot the guns every single day. Uh, fighter pilots may in their entire fighter career get to shoot one or two missiles. Uh, they do get to fire their, if they've got 20 mil or 25 mil guns, or the, with the A-10 they got the 30 mil, they'll get to shoot that quite a bit. And an aircraft commander in this unit will get anywhere between two to uh, two missions a week and uh, approximately four to ten missions a month. The precision made possible by intensive training and special tactics allows targets to be struck accurately. I would consider the typical type of target to be something that's a jeep size type target or maybe larger. And, uh, you know, certainly we can go after uh, vehicles, we can go after personnel. Uh, in the open, for example, we may be able to see some of those uh, and destroy those kind of targets, buildings, bunkers, things of that nature. Combat missions have repeatedly demonstrated the value of specialized aircraft such as the Spectre. When ordinary bombing attacks are ruled out due to the proximity of civilians or friendly forces, the Spectre gunships are called in to do the job, as they were in 1990's Operation Just Cause in Panama. Good case in point would be uh, Just Cause, where the uh, AC-130, one of its missions was to uh, work on the Commandancia, and uh, you'll recall the, the vivid pictures of the Commandancia after that, where the, uh, the building was taken down with very little collateral damage outside the perimeter of the building. That is the role of the AC-130, to strike targets with limited collateral damage and with high confidence that you're not hitting something other than you intend to strike. The AC-130 Spectre is based on a transport aircraft. And like a transport, it is big and slow. Its pivot turn maneuver gives it great accuracy, but makes it a very predictable target for enemy gunners. To minimize the risk to the crew and aircraft, it flies at night when it cannot be easily seen by the enemy. Our tactics do put us at risk at times, and we are very limited in the environment in which we can operate. Uh, we have to take into account the threat to us on the ground and any uh, counter air threat that may be available. And uh, it's not a general purpose, any place, any time uh, type of weapon system. It's, it's very good at a very specific mission, but uh, we have to make sure that we uh, pick and choose as much as we can the mission to ensure one success and two that the airplane comes home. The unique capabilities that we provide, that very uh, precise firepower close in with a low lethality envelope allows us to work very close to friendly forces. The Spectre's night capabilities are reliant on its sophisticated sensors, contained in a small booth in the middle of the aircraft. In the front right of the booth is where the electronic warfare officer sits with all that associated equipment. To my left in the front of the booth is the infrared sensor operator, who basically uses his infrared sis sensors to locate targets and guide the guns in on them. In the back of the booth is the TV operator who uses the uh, low-light television system also to find targets and guide the munitions down on them. The night sensors are used to search for targets. The forward-looking infrared sight can detect targets even on the blackest of nights. Sensing the minute heat differential between a human being and a machine. The key to the gunship's accuracy is the careful coordination of the sensor operators, the fire control officer, and the pilots. The sensor operator is primarily responsible for target detection. Okay, The navigator gets us in the tactical working area. 
and the sensor coordinates with the fire control officer and navigator for uh, target acquisition and firing on the target. Once the target is located, the data is passed to the fire control officer. This data is loaded into the aircraft's ballistic computer, which calculates the proper ballistic trajectory and designates a target for the pilot. On modern fighters and attack aircraft, the weapons are aimed through a sight called the heads-up display, located in front of the pilot. This displays most of the critical flight information and aiming points. On the Spectre, the HUD is located on the side instead of in front of the pilot. Well, the HUD is what we use to aim the weapons. Uh, with the computer-generated symbols that we get from the HUD through the computer that's located back near the uh, fire control officer station, uh, that's how we aim the guns. That's When I'm shooting uh, the weapons on this aircraft, I'm basically looking into a black hole. I can't see anything on the ground. Uh, we're firing you know, at altitudes that I can't distinguish ground references, I can't distinguish the target at all. But the sensors are able to see it, and their information is fed into the fire control computer, and that in turn generates the symbols on the HUD, and I use that to aim with. Once I get the symbols matched up on the HUD, then I can fire the weapons. The pilot's decision to fire must be verified by the sensor operator to make sure that the guns are aiming in the right direction. If the pilot makes a mistake, the computer intervenes. In that case, the computer simply prevents us from firing unless we have the proper uh, firing solution. Uh, we work very closely with the uh, sensors uh, on that. Whichever sensor we're using, the TV or the uh, infrared, uh, it's, it's kind of a chicken and egg question. The pilot pushes the trigger, and then when the sensor determines that he is locked on to the target, and the gun is, is at that point following the camera around, uh, they are locked in by the computer. At, when he decides that he is locked onto the target, he pushes his consent button and the gun will go off. The night alone cannot protect the Spectre. Even the smallest and least advanced armies now employ radar-directed anti-aircraft guns and infrared-guided missiles. The Spectre defends itself from these threats electronically. It has sensors located around the aircraft to pick up the electronic signals of radar-directed guns that might be homing in on it. And under the aircraft are missile warning receivers. It is the job of the Spectre's electronic warfare officer to determine how the aircraft should respond to each threat. Some enemy weapons cannot be detected electronically, in which case human eyesight must be used to defend the Spectre. At the side of the aircraft sits one of the observers, and in the tail sits another, looking through a plexiglass bubble. These observers have learned from experience what enemy fire looks like. For example, a uh, surface-to-air missile, uh, you'll see a bright light, uh, basically the launch. Then the, the missile coming up, you'll see the plume, the aft end of the missile, which is more of a corkscrew type action uh, coming up at you. And they're, they're quick. They're very quick. On AAA, uh, the gunners, they use tracers to direct their fire on uh, different size tracers for different type, different uh, size AAA coming up. Uh, for example, it's more of a lines of BBs coming up at you, red BBs, and that's very, very quick. It's uh, also very, very dangerous, very accurate. It is the experience of crewmen like these that has made the Spectre so formidable a weapon system.